All right, hey everyone. I just wanted to show a quick video on how to do some really cool stuff within SketchUp with using an online platform. Now, a lot of people have been asking, how do you do some type of analysis work for parts, like stress analysis? Well, for the longest time, I couldn't find anything, and there was a way where you could export your STL part, import it into FreeCAD, and follow a bunch of steps to convert it to a solid body and then do the FEM meshing. That works sometimes. However, I found another place online for free that will do meshless FEA. If you don't know what meshless or meshed FEA is, that's okay. You can research it. But nonetheless, this is how you do some basic stress analysis on parts that you've made in SketchUp. So, First things first, you have to export as STL, and with that, you have to make sure that you're at the correct scale that you want when you export. For example, I usually model in meters. So from this point to here, the radius is 11.5 millimeters, but I model in meters, so it's 11.5 meters. This prevents a lot of issues with tiny faces intersecting and so forth and so forth. So, to scale it down, S, grab one of these corners, hold control for uniform, and then you'll notice down here, bottom right corner, the size, or the scale, I mean, if you do 0 0.001, that will take it from meters to millimeters. So, I've already done that, and then what you need to do is you're going to export as 3D model, Set to STL. You're going to go to Options. I always set it to Model Units. And then you're going to hit OK and you're going to export it. First time I did this, it did not work because I forgot to set Model Info back to millimeters once I scaled everything down. I left this at meters and then everything just didn't work. So, how do you verify that your STL is indeed to the right scale? Now, most people are going to say STL is dimensionless. That is absolutely correct. However, sometimes it does save data to it so that other programs know some sort of information. So, how do you know if it is the correct scale? Well, we open it up in a slicer. In Prusa Slicer, if it's in meters, it'll always give me a warning saying, your object is in meters, do you want to scale down to millimeters? And I'll hit yes. Since this time it didn't, and everything down here in the size is correct for my bounding boxes, then I know I'm good. Okay, so what is next? Well, you need to go to a website called intact.design and sign up for a free account. The free account, I think you get three projects, and then you have to delete one in order to keep using it. But with an academic account, it's free and you get unlimited. So you need to do a new project, you're going to choose file, and you're going to go find your part. And then the units set to millimeters. I'm just going to call this loft practice, why not? And hit begin import. Okay, it'll take probably about one minute for it to fully upload. Sometimes it doesn't. If it gets stuck, just hit refresh. Okay, so now it's there. I'm going to go into loft practice. This is the way that it imported it. And you can see Z is up, and this is your X is to the right and the left. This is like looking down at a 3D printer bed. This is what we want. This is good. Left mouse click rotates. Right mouse click moves the part or pans. And then middle mouse button holding it zooms in and out, and so does scrolling. So let's just kind of examine the part. So if we hit new scenario. Okay, these top six are what we call quick tests. It automatically does the restraints and puts in the forces and then just does some testing. Then there's your advanced tests. So I'm going to show a couple of them. I'm going to do squash. Okay, so you can see the restraints. Up direction is positive Z. And 
you can see the bottom plate is restrained and we have a force of 50 newtons smashing down onto this. Let's let's use something we're more familiar with. I know this is a little unconventional. Let's do newtons. Two pounds force. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's put something that 250 pounds. Human Oh, whoops. I want 250 pounds, so let's go up to 1,000 newtons. Okay, 224. Let's just use 1,000 newtons. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Okay, so we have 1,000 newtons going to be squishing into this. So we're just going to, oh, most important, you got to go to materials. You can do ABS. I haven't been all the way through these. There is a lot. So PLA should be in there. I just got to find it right here. Now, if you want documentation on the materials, click this arrow. Documentation, open link in new tab. And this shows you some basic setups. But if you go to supported materials, click on the Excel sheet. This will give you all the material properties. The Young's modulus, the Poisson's ratio, yield strength, la di da di -de da so that if you need it for other things, you can do that. So, all right, let's go back. Okay, then we're just going to hit simulate. Takes about 10 minutes to run through it. Okay, so it says submitted. Now their servers will actually do the computational math. So let's do a new scenario and let's do stress. Now, if this was an assembly part, such as one made in SolidWorks or on shape, uh, intact recognizes assemblies and you can do different materials for different parts but since this is made in SketchUp this whole piece is just one solid part I haven't messed with exporting multiple STL files to quote-unquote simulate a assembly so I'm gonna have to test it out all right let's do materials again let's go down to PLA now, back to physics, let's add some gravity, Hit save, let's add a restraint, um, let's restrain the bottom by clicking the face. Now, you can do select one face at a time where it'll let you click each individual face, but we don't want that. We want everything, at least for restraining. Save. Now. Let's do, if you do a vector loading, this is where you can select your individual faces if you want or a whole face. If I click here, that one face is going to have vector loading applied in the upward direction. So we can set that down to zero. Then maybe we want it to go in the Y direction into the part. There used to be a way when they first did this. Okay. I don't know if you can really. Let's do this. Yeah, there used to be a way where you could change the angle, which was nice because then you could select where it was going to go. Anyways, you kind of get the idea. But I'm going to cancel out the vector load, and we're going to do a torque load. Vector load, you just put in your force, and it will just do it all over whatever. I'm going to do torque, and I want to do a torque about that through the center. And I don't know, I'm just going to do 100 newton meters. It sounds good to me. Oh, then you can actually change the angle on this one so okay so a few options here it's kind of nifty I'm gonna hit save okay then you know what for the heck of it let's do a vector load on this face and why it's being torqued let's do a compression since that is 
what we want, and I'm going to do a thousand newtons in the negative direction. Okay, so now we're going to have a force pushing down inside the squeeze. And you can see how we picked the entire top face. Now, if I wanted to, let's hit save. Let's do this one more time with a pressure load. If I wanted to, I can do select one face at a time. And I've got to move around. You can select each individual face. If you hold shift, you can select by painting. So there's that option. Okay, now we're going to hit simulate. And then it will run through. And it should email you when it's done. And this will take a few minutes, and then we'll go through some results. So, I'm going to pause the video right here. Okay, so now that this one is completed, let's take a peek at what's going on. So, give it a second to load. Okay. All right. So, we have all this information. On the right-hand side, we have our color bar. It tells us that we have 1.33 times 10 to the negative 2 millimeters, so... Move that over, we have 0.01 millimeters of dis, uh, displacement or deformation. So if you want to see what the deformation looks like, hit play, and I'll show you. But now that's really exaggerated, so if you want to scale, you click this, but nothing really happens because you can't really see it. But it's showing you kind of how the deformation is going to happen. Now, if you're... Um, Kind of curious and want an exact solution of deformation. If you hold shift and left click somewhere, it'll tell you exactly what's going on. We have displacement at this point, X and Y. This is our displacement in millimeters. And the von Mises stress is not too bad. So you can just shift, shift click everywhere and it will tell you a lot of stuff. I mean, you can copy, paste it. So what you could do is in Excel, do an X, Y, and then von Mises and pick all along a certain area and kind of graph how the stress is looking. I know it's kind of tedious, but it works. Um, so then if we actually go to solution field, we can see the von Mises stress. Let's do the color bar and adjust it a little bit. You can see where your stress concentrations really are around these edges. That's really dropping it down. That's really just trying to balance out the reds and the blues. But you can see kind of where, yeah, right in here is really some stress concentrations. So that's where it should be the highest is right there. Yeah, 2.72, the max is almost 3 megapascals. So if you adjust this color ball slider, notice how things kind of get adjusted along the right-hand side as well. So, if we pick right there, it tells us, yeah, so that's the squish. So... Now, let's go back and see if the other one has completed it has a stress scenario. All right, let's take a peek at this. Deformation should be, whoops, total displacement. Ah, it's got more deformation. It's um, 0.2 millimeters. Woo, from the torque, look at that. Just really messed that up. And then the von Mises stress. Yeah, that's it's gonna be pretty yeah. Wow. Forty one megapascals in the red. Let's look with a torque. Yeah, forty one megapascals. So that's basics of how to do some stress testing on parts that we made. So let's just verify, if I look at this, I want to verify that it is, um, what's the point right here in Z? 
39 millimeters. Okay, yeah, so it is the correct scale show because it should go up to 40 or pretty close to it. I think it was 40 in Prusa Sizer. Anyways, so everything's the correct scale. But now you kind of have a better of a idea of some stress testing using SketchUp and also the other, this intact. And then looking at the solution field, then you can Google, you know, 40 megapascals to PSI. So not bad. Um, with PLA, I highly doubt it's going to be able to withstand that. But it's looking like it possibly could. If it was straight PLA, if this was not 3D printed with layer lines, like if this was injection molded, it'd probably be able to withstand it. So that's probably what that is saying. 3D printed, probably, we know for a fact that would just tear apart. Anyways, so have fun. Enjoy. And go learn and do something cool. Anyways, thanks guys.